Hi all, it's Peter Patch here. We are building a cruising sailboat, as you may well know. This week has been all about electrics, all about electrics this week. Um, I've done very little else, so I think this is probably the ideal week to talk to you a bit about the electrics, the way I've done it in this boat. Um, And the state of play now, as we stand here this evening, is that the main distribution, the main looms or distribution network, or whatever you want to call it, uh, in, there's, there's one or two wires missing, but, but it's basically in. So, as I say, I'm going to talk you through the system, I think. And it starts in here with a rather large battery box. You can see in there, and the intention is to get the biggest battery in there that I can possibly fit. Almost certainly an, an AGM lead acid battery going in there. I anticipate 200 amp hours, something like that. Now I should say that, in my opinion at least, this is, this is a very, very simple electrical system. I've tried to keep it as low tech as, as I can whilst, whilst you know, having a functioning, comfortable-ish, electrical system. So, as I say, 200 amp hour AGM lead acid battery in there. And then, of course, it goes from there up to, if you just turn around there, carry it up to the switch panel here. And, um, you know, it's a very old switch panel. I've had it, it's been in my possession for, I don't know, over 25 years, I dare say, but it functions. You know, toggle switches for the various um, things that are running, various loads that are running off of there, and each each load is fused. 10 amp fuse on each load, although you can put smaller fuses in there, obviously. Good. So, let's start with the basics. So, shore power comes in at the aft end of the boat, that's probably not a surprise. And from there, it runs through a, a fuse box and into the electrical bay where this Fictron Energy battery charger will be installed and through to this switch and power socket. That's the main system, very, very simple. Um, from the batteries, the 12 volt batteries, we're running through to the switch panel. I've said that already. I've run my cables in, in conduit. This is basic cheap-ish conduit that you can buy at any you know, DIY supermarket, whatever you used to call them. Comes in different sizes, There's a couple of different sizes. The beauty of this stuff is it's flexible. I clip it up with hose clips like that, these, these clips, these P clips. It just clips up out of the way, runs through beautifully. You just have to put a hole through various bulkheads and run it through. First thing I want to say is, is that conduit, if you're putting a new installation in yourself, Go for bigger conduit than you think you're going to need. That's something I've learned <laughs> on this build. Bigger conduit is better. It makes the job a lot easier, I can tell you. So, first tip, big conduit. Then, in the conduit, obviously, I'm running wires. I pull the wires through with this, this flexi metal thing, poke it through there, attach the wire to the end, put it back through. Yes. 
several people have told me that uh, you can get wire nice and easily through conduit by either a little bit of light fishing line with a bit of tissue tied to the end of it and then blowing it through with compressed air or sucking it through with a vacuum cleaner. I'm sure it will work wonderfully. I've used that flexible thing. Um, so the wires come through. The most important thing for a boat electrical system is that you, you in my opinion, is that your wires need to be big enough. So you need to know what sort of load you're putting on the various circuits and you think each of those switches, each of those fuses is a separate circuit. You need to know what load in terms of amps you've got on that circuit and make sure your wires are big enough. I have used 16 AWG all the way through um, because theoretically it's not quite that straightforward but keep it simple 16 age of WG will carry about 20 amps none of my circuits get anywhere near that and I say 10 amp fuses I'm happy with 16 AWG I could have used lighter wire no doubt but um, and it would have been cheaper and less weight but uh, it needs to be robust as well I think robustness is, is, a, is a major consideration in cruising sailboats so I've used 16 AWG wire all, all the way through, and I've splashed out. In the past, I've wired, <laughs> I've wired with any old wire I could get hold of. Stranded wire. It needs to be stranded and not solid core, because stranded is, is, can flex and doesn't suffer from metal fatigue nearly as much. So stranded wire is important. But other than that, you can use anything. And I wired our previous boat, I wired with, with that speaker cable stuff in you know, with the, with the transparent insulation on it and it worked fine but this time I've done it properly I've bought tins copper stranded wire with with silicon insulation you know not the cheapest I've got some here there we go it's lovely and flexible it's, you can't really see it but it's tin copper in the middle beautiful stuff um, but if you're doing something like that, the next consideration is, ideally you'd use a different colour for each circuit so that it's easy to trace. But that involves you buying an awful lot of wire, different spools of wire. So basically I've used red and black, or this one's actually claims to be brown. I've used red, brown and black everywhere. Now I say 16 AWG everywhere, but that's not true. The all of the loads running from the switches are running on 16 AWG, but obviously the, the supply from the batteries up to the switch panel needs to be bigger because all of the load is going on that, and I've used 10 AWG for that. So I've got two 10 AWG cables running up to the panel, 16 running out. And I've tried to keep it relatively tidy. Um, in, in a manner that I know what's going on there. So we've got a negative bus bar, we've got various loads going out, and I've labelled everything so it's easy for me to trace, despite the fact that it's all the same colour, red or black. I know the system, I can trace it easily. So, there's my system in there. So, from the, from the power, we run in conduit, up behind these seats, up some terminal blocks that are tucked up in here out of the way, run forwards to the four cabin lights through that bulkhead, and another conduit runs under this seat, the top end of this seat, through to that side, some more terminal blocks. I'll say about the conduit that in all wire runs, I've tried to keep them up so nothing is in the bilge. I've tried to keep them as high as possible, otherwise as high as reasonably possible. Terminal block up in here, another conduit running aft for the port side supplies. The further around you get, the less wires are in the conduit. Running aft from the switch panel, I've got this channel that I, I built in there. That wire still needs to be tied up, but channel running through, so no conduit, well, no, no conduit there. Wires running in the channel. Through to the electrics bay there, and through into the engine room in a piece of conduit again. So in the end, the engine room actually gets supply from, from the starboard side going aft and the port side going aft. So it's got, got electrical supply from both sides. 
So we think about the various loads that we've got, the, the switches basically serve to remind me. These labels are, are still the old labels and I should possibly put new ones on, but loads we've got accessories at the moment only supplies that car radio. It's actually a marinized car radio. Um, instruments supplies at the moment the plotter, but will also supply the um, autopilot. Blower is the fan for the stove. Almost no draw on that. This one, which is unlabeled, will be the fan for the toilet. Cabin lights, self-explanatory, the cabin light system. All cabin lights are LED. There are 13 cabin lights in total, all LED, all roughly speaking um, 2.5 watts. So about a quarter of an amp, a little bit less. Um, so if even if they're all on, we're drawing about four amps. If all are switched on at the same time, which is a, an unlikely scenario. So, cabin light circuit, nav lights, self-explanatory, bilge pump, then we will have a steaming light, and this one will probably be for the VHF, VHF. It's possible that I end up replacing this panel with a bigger one with a couple more switches. VHF to come in, AIS transducer to come in, probably want their own switches. So I said we've got terminal blocks in, hidden away in various places. They're impossible to film, I can't show you them. But basically I'm using these, these, is that focused or not? Yeah. yeah using these terminals with screws through on the terminal blocks. And I'm connecting those on, you know, it's, it's not rocket science, but very old school, let's say this. So I'm just stripping the insulation off, the, the tinned solar wire, the tinned stranded wire. Got these little terminals, and I'm soldering them on. I'm using heat shrink, and I'm crimping the terminal onto the, onto the wire and soldering it, old school soldering. Now I know there are all these new fangled things that you, with the, it all built in with the heat shrink and the solder built in, you just put a cigarette lighter under it or something. And I've tried them, and I prefer old school, I'll be honest with you. I prefer old school soldering iron, solder it on there, obviously with a, with a electrical, or electronic solder, so the flux is not a corrosive flux, um, and heat shrink it. And that way I know that it's soldered well, and you know, I can inspect it, I can see it, I'm happy that it's soldered well, I put the heat shrink on, and I know it's a good job. That's the way I've done it throughout. I've got one little issue, and that is I've tried to where the wiring's visible, I've tried to run it in this, in this, I bought this cloth, stuff, conduit -y stuff, and I hate it, I'll be honest with you. So I've just been out and bought, bought some quarter round wood, pretty heavy duty, but I'll plane it up. And I'm sure cutting links, I can't really show you, can I? Be cutting links of that to, to tuck my wiring behind. That is horrible. But I haven't got much visible wire, so I haven't got many bits to hide. And we should try to do it a bit nicer than that. And that's it, my boat electrics. Very, very simple. No fridge, you will have noticed. Um, I shall practice food storage. Uh, simple electrical system, I believe. And that's the way I've done it in here. And it's nearly finished. Obviously I've got, you know, when the bits and bobs come in and need to be connected up, I've now got the distribution network in, so I only need to do a, a bit of localized connecting up. For example, the plotter is now connected and working. Oh. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Come on I agree to that. It's not receiving any GPS in the shed, or that's not quite true, but it's, it's got very poor GPS reception in the shed. But working, looks beautiful, I think you'll agree. That's it for this week, the boat electrical system. I hope that's of some value to some of you. Uh, specialist video this week, obviously. Thanks for watching. Give yourself a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. We'll get over to the SV Tapatia merchandise, the shop, t-shirts, challenge coins on the website. See you next time. Bye.
There's the bottle. There's the pump there. With a line that goes down into that horrendous bilge. The level's not going down very quick, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's some horrible, stinky stuff, aren't it? 